new research from the Oklahoma Medical Research Foundation has found a link between diet and multiple sclerosis and relief from symptoms could be as close as your kitchen. So here with us today to learn more are Dr. Kasha Zyla Jackson and Dr. Scott Plafker. Thank you guys so much for being here today. We really appreciate your time. Thanks Thank you for, for having, having us. us. Fascinating stuff, important work as always. So let's talk about um, the diet itself. What is the diet that you found that could help with the onset of some MS symptoms here? Uh, we found that well-formulated ketogenic diet, which is a very low carbohydrate by high-fat high diet, can mitigate the symptoms of multiple sclerosis. And I emphasize a well-formulated ketogenic diet because ketogenic diet can be, is an umbrella form and it, it means high fat, but the source of fat really matters. So for most people that they, who are using this for a weight loss purpose, they are switching to bacon and saturated fats. What we found that the diet that is beneficial for MS has a high content of omega-3 fatty acids from olive oil, avocados, uh, nuts. So a little bit different source of fats. I think that's a, a good distinction, right? Because you see a lot about the keto diet on, on social mm -hmm. media and it may not always be ac accurate. So let's take it from the experts here, um, these two. So Dr. Plafker as well, you had a hypothesis here and this supports your hypothesis about processed foods. Is that correct? Right, okay. so yeah. the idea is to avoid ultra processed foods, so fast food. Um, so there's, lot, there's a lot of sugar and salt that's been put into a lot of foods that are packaged and it's to keep them from spoiling, but there are adverse um, health effects to consuming that much salt and sugar. And so partly with using a ketogenic diet is you kind of remove a lot of that from, your, from what you eat. And it really, the, the ketogenic diet, these high fat diets, they really change your relationship with food. You sort of lose your sweet tooth and things that you formerly didn't realize were sweet, like almonds, they taste sweet to you now. And so you really get a better handle on being able to control your appetite. You lose that whole hangry feeling. Mm -hmm. Um, I've done this diet for quite a while myself, yeah. just for athletic purposes, sure. to be honest. And um, it, it's very, it, it really does change your relationship with food. I imagine if you push through that really tough kind of beginning part of it, and then like you said, all of a sudden it clicks and your taste buds are kind of changed. Yeah. Fascinating. You really do. You, 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 by changing your relationship, you, you get control over your appetite in a much better way. And, and you actually get much more satisfaction out of what you eat. Amazing. Okay, let's talk about the MS portion of this specifically. Tell me about how the study worked and, and kind of MS specifically, what did you find when incorporating this diet? The study was done in a mouse model of multiple sclerosis and in this model mice develop very similar symptoms to those experienced by MS patients, meaning the, the motor deficits and also the visual deficits. In, uh, in multiple sclerosis patients, the first symptoms in majority of the patients is loss of vision in one, one eye and we found that by treating mice that have been immunized with MS, uh, this well-formulated ketogenic diet, it first of all, if it's uh, started before the immunization, it makes them resistant to developing the multiple sclerosis symptoms. If it started after the first symptoms, it, it reverses the, the visual and motor deficits. Fascinating. So let's talk about the logistics of the study. How long did, did this take you guys to come to these conclusions? And then let's talk about next steps here now that you have these preliminary findings. So we've been working on this for about four or five years. So this was the work that Kasha did to get her PhD. And so it was, it was an enormous amount of work and we had contributions of course from other folks in the lab. It's a team effort, that's how labs sure. work. Um, <clears throat> so we got this model set up. Kasha has a background in nutrition. She's a dietitian, and so she was really interested in pursuing sort of non-drug based therapies and so we got excited about using the ketogenic diet and we got initial results early on about four or five years ago and it took a while to continue to repeat the experiments we did this in hundreds of mice um, and so uh, the next steps though are we're trying to break it apart and figure out what how does it actually work what is the mechanism and so our leading idea right now is the idea that this this type of diet can dramatically reduce inflammation. And it's why it's also being used in other diseases, rheumatoid arthritis, um, type two diabetes, anything where inflammation is a major player. 
this diet seems to do, if it's a well-formulated ketogenic diet, seems to be very effective in reducing markers of inflammation. And we think that that may be the basis for how it may be working in multiple sclerosis, which it has a big inflammation component to it. So I know you guys have a lot more research to do, of course, but at this stage, are you confident in, in recommending someone who maybe has MS or rheumatoid arthritis or, or anything like that to maybe, maybe try a, a ketogenic diet? Absolutely. Okay. Well, first of all, we recommend to, uh, to communicate this with your doctor, with your physician. However, uh, based on the small clinical trials with ketogenic diet, mostly done in Europe, we see that there are beneficial effects in patients. So we would recommend that there's no harm in trying. It may not work for, for every patient. People have different metabolism. Some diets can work for one people um, and not for other people. But we think that there's no harm in, in trying. But it definitely should be done in collaboration with a physician and a nutritionist yes. because people may have additional issues that make the diet maybe incompatible for them. And so they, it's something they would need to discuss. But you can certainly cut out ultra processed and fast food from your diet. And I don't think anyone would tell you that that's a bad idea. Yeah. And it will most likely reduce inflammation. And if you cut out these ultra processed foods, you, it also very good for weight loss and general well-being and health. Sure. So like you said, no harm in this. Talk to your doctor. So combination of your amazing research, talking to your doctor, we could really be on to something here. Guys, thank you so much for coming on today. Thanks Fascinating stuff. Us. Great work. We really appreciate your time today. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Okay, Jonathan, let's send it on over to you.